President! Mr. President, are we talking to the Iranians about the hostages? There's a story today that says we are. Are we talking to the Iranians about the hostages? to introduce to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, Natasha Achenzar. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Let's all be seated, pull your chairs in, and we're going to be entertained while we're having lunch.
Mazevsky, Mr. President, to your left, that beautiful lady, the States has earned the ethnic vote. The ethnic people of my city and state don't vote for someone because of the of any generation, of any party, as they have a man who has consistently stood up for them when it counted, a man by the name of Ronald He had lost both his cufflinks. <laughs> Whoever took the president's cufflinks, please return them today. Because every time I go to Washington, he asks me where they are. President, that same warm the President Ronald Reagan. Jim, and thank you all very much. And I'd like to just say a word myself about the late Al 
Mazzetti. And yes, I did know I got Chicago politics. I'm <laughs> 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 very grateful for it. With your help, Vice President Bush and I carried Illinois in 1980 and 1984. And as for this year, let's just say that Victory 88 is more than just a But to compare with the vibrance and good humor of Chicago, Frank Sinatra, and know that God has been good to America, and that he certainly loves Chicago. When His Holiness Pope John Paul II came to Chicago nine years ago, he was met by a vast audience of some one and a half million of each other, and now write a common history. Yes, to write a common history. For the past eight years, you've been writing what is one of his most exciting and remarkable chapters. We brought employment to an all-time high. You all know so well that we can march into the future, leading the world into a new age of growth, technology, and innovation. But we can do so without leaving behind the vital moral foundation. But it is also the engine that gives our country life. And it's the reason that we produce. It's for our families that we work and labor, so that we can join together around the dinner table, bring our children up the right way, care for our parents, and reach out to those. You know, I've said before, there really are only two things that liberals don't understand. The things that change, and the things that don't. <laughs> Technology, these things change and under us for the better. But America's basic moral and you know, after the debate, I have to say, isn't that just like an ACLU member? He didn't even have a prayer when he needed one. And this is only the beginning. After the next debate, I think we'll be up to the nothing. Well, the truth is that on issue and common history and the partisan issues that hang in the balance as we prepare to elect a new president and Congress. Now, unlike some liberal organizations, we don't believe that separation of church and state requires ending the Catholic Church's tax exemption or removing the words under God. And we... We don't favor the right to retail what they call non op yeah. Or that prostitution should be legalized. Or that children should be denied the right to begin their school day by joining with their classmates in a voluntary prayer. No, that's not what we believe. And I think it's time for us to say that America's most basic and fundamental values are not unconstitutional. <laughs> Next thing you know, they'll say that grilling kielbasa is an environmental hazard.